Okay guys, I'm back for my second video and I'll try to cram in as much as I can about everything that I found in the Bible that totally coincides with um, the third temple and it being built. Um, but what I wanted to tell you guys first is I watched a video on YouTube and this lady answers way more questions that I could answer about when they're thinking it's going to be built, things of that nature. Her last name is Healy, H-E-A-L-Y, and it was on, it was a CBN interview. So if you just YouTube CBN interview Third Temple, then you'll probably find a video. I watched it, but when I printed it out, it literally printed out all the questions and answers that um, she was talking about. But I didn't want to sit here and read it when you could just watch it. So, um, yeah, if you find her, that's the video. And that explained a lot. But here we go. Okay, so this is what I found, and there are so many other references to the third temple all throughout the Bible. And one thing I do know about the Bible is that I'm learning is God never changes. It, he, he doesn't change. He's the same person. So um, it kind of aggravates me sometimes when some people want to say like, oh, well, God's going to change. He realizes that, you know, there's um, more going on in the world. So pretty much kind of trying to use an excuse that um, God has changed with the world so we can get away with more, but that is not true, okay? He doesn't change, and sinning is still sinning. So, okay, just wanted to get that off my chest, but here we go. All right, so in Thessalonians um, 2.4, it says, Who opposes and exalts himself against every so-called God or object of worship so that he takes a seat in the temple of God, proclaiming himself to be God? So this is just referring to the Antichrist is going to sit, be the one sitting in the, tam uh, in the temple acting like he's God. But he's not. A lot of people are going to um, gonna believe this, the Antichrist. Very deceptive, but we need to stay strong in our faith and our word yet again. Um, another, another one is in uh, Thessalonians is 2-3, uh, which is right after that. Um, Let no one deceive you in any way. For that day will come, unless the rebel rebellion comes first, and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the son of destruction. Again, that's referring to the Antichrist. Um, and a little bit more about that is, I think just I think it might be referring to that it could be before the temple's built, or it could be after the temple's built. But then again, I'm not really sure, so please don't quote me on that. Um, next one I found is Isaiah uh, 44.8. Fear not, nor be afraid. Have I not told you from an old and declared it? And are, you are my witness. Is there a God besides me? There is no rock. I know not any. So this is, this kind of means a lot to me. It feels good in my heart to know that, you know, God is still telling us, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Um, he's going to protect us. So we need to realize that. Um, the next one is Revelations uh, 21, 21, 22. And I saw no temple in the city, for its temple is the Lord God, the Almighty, and the Lamb. Pretty much saying, don't fall for the Antichrist again. All right, uh, Jeremiah 30, 31 through 31, 40. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, write in a book all the words that I have spoken to you. For behold, days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will restore the fortunes of my people, Israel and Judah, says the Lord, and I will bring them back to the land and I will give, get, and, whoa, let me start that over. <laughs> I'm an idiot. Um, and I will bring them back to the land that I gave to their fathers and they shall take possession of it. These are the words that the Lord spoke concerning Israel and Judah. Thus says the Lord, we have, we have heard a cry of panic, of terror and no peace. Uh, next one, Mark 13 through 14, 13, 14. Uh, but when you see the abomination of desolation standing where he ought not to be, let the reader understand. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Again, saying don't follow this. Um... Deuteronomy 33, uh, then the Lord your God will restore your fortunes and have compassion on you, and he will gather you again from all the peoples where the Lord your God has scattered you. Revelation 1.3, blessed is one, the one who reads aloud the words of this prophecy, and blessed are those who hear and who keep, that, keep what is written in it, for the time is near. 
Uh, next one, Ephesians uh, 2, 1 through 22. And you, were dead, and you were dead in the trespasses and sins in which you once walked, following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience, among whom we, are all, we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, like the rest of mankind. But God, being rich in mercy because of the great love with which he has loved us, amen, even when we are dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. That's amazing. And the last one I'm going to read from, because I don't know if it's going to let me, or the last two, let me upload such a long video, but hopefully it does. Fingers crossed. Uh, Corinthians, this one spoke to me the most out of all of them. Corinthians 6, 1 through 18. Working together with him, then we appeal to you not to receive the grace of God in vain. Don't receive it in vain. So true. For he says, in a favorable time, favorable time I listened to you, and in a day of salvation I have helped you. Behold now is the favorable time. Behold now is the day of salvation. We put no obstacle in anyone's way, so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we commend ourselves in every way, by great endurance and inflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger. Wow. Um, that is kind of saying to me personally that we're going to see some stuff and we're going to go through st some stuff. But throughout this all, we need to remain peaceful in our hearts and show others that we're going through all this with l love and faith in our hearts. And the last one is Revelation 13, 18. This calls for wisdom. Let the one who has understanding calculate the numbers of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is 666. So remember, there's going to be a mark of a beast, and we are not going to get it. Just remain strong and faithful in that, that God is always going to protect us. So I hope... I got as much of the word out there as I could in these two videos. God bless you guys. Again, you guys are like my new best friends. And just keep strong and let's keep being warriors. And uh, let's show everybody who our Lord is. Get the word out there as much as we can. Um, God bless you again and you all have a great night. Okay, bye.